Welcome back. Continuing Seven's special coverage of this extreme weather event from ex-tropical cyclone uh, Oswald that's dumping all this rain and heavy wind and tornadoes even around the southeast region. We'll keep you up to date with our crews right across the region for as long as it takes to, uh, to get all the job done. Yes, and of course, Bill, for the latest on the severe weather around the southeast, we'll cross back to Emergency Management Queensland now and Richard Wardell from the Bureau of Meteorology. Well, Richard, thank you very much for your time. Bring us up to date. What's the latest warnings that you have? Well, we have uh, severe weather warnings out for um, destructive winds, heavy rainfall, uh, abnormally high tides, and dangerous surf for the southeast uh, coast of Queensland, uh, for the Harvey Bay and Burnett districts as well. Um, and we um, have a low pressure system in the center of the, the state, or 180 kilometers north of Tarum. And that's moving southwards, south southeast at about 16 kilometres an hour. And to the southeast of that low pressure system, we're seeing all that moisture being driven on shore by those north easterly winds. Those winds are also very strong aloft, and some of that um, strong winds aloft, aloft is being mixed down to the surface. And that's where we're seeing those reports of tornadoes and quite some destructive damage to, uh, to houses and trees. We're expecting the system and the heavy band of rain and, and strong winds to move through the Sunshine Coast uh, later today, this afternoon, and make its way to Brisbane. Very busy man today, and we do thank you very much for bringing us up to date. That was Richard Wardell there from the Weather Bureau. In Bagara, the water is expected to peak half a metre higher than the town's devastating flood back in 2010. Then residents had a week to prepare, but this time it's happened in a matter of hours. Here's how locals saw the disaster arrive. Oh, we were just making lunch and the boys were sitting at the island table and um, yeah, we just heard a big gust of wind, a bit of a growl of wind and um, yeah, it just I just ran actually into the hallway because I thought this is serious. So um, yeah, and the window just shattered all over the boys in the kitchen and then from there... It took your mind yeah. away. You just had no clue what was going on. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. That was Jeff Bruce reporting there, speaking to residents at Bagara, which of course was hit by a tornado yesterday. Um, if you'd like to keep up to date with what's happening on the weather, we are live streaming our coverage on the web. Now you can go to our website, yahoo7.com.au slash Queensland, and that will have all the latest information regarding this severe weather event. We've also received a couple of updates from uh, people on Twitter. You can also contact us on social media as well. One here is saying it looks like the Lighthouse restaurant at Cleveland could be going under by the looks of things. A picture there with the obviously with the water coming up from the tide uh, and also that uh, weather has just picked up a notch in Pine Rivers. Everyone's out stocking up and uh, there was reports of uh, a caravan flipped on its, uh, on its roof on the highway as well. So send us your messages and updates. Yes, it's going to be a tough day out there today. Uh, we'll take time now to take a break and of course we'll be back soon with all the latest on this extreme weather event affecting the southeast. Well, welcome back to our live coverage of this extreme weather event that's hitting the southeast at the moment. We have a picture there of the map of Australia, and this actually is a graphic of the last two days of this extreme weather system building. Now, as you can see, uh, it's, a, it's a huge weather system, isn't it, Bill? It's quite yeah. massive. It covers a huge area there, and of course, it's slowly moving down the coast and uh, is heading towards northern New South Wales. And, uh, it's a massive event and it's causing quite a lot of problems out there for emergency services and for locals who are very concerned about flooding. There's lots of rainfall on the way, 200 to 300 millimetres, destructive winds, 125 kilometres an hour, which is akin to like a, a Category 1 cyclone. So um, there's a, a lot of severe weather likely to hit the southeast. There's also concerns about tornadoes. Um, they obviously can't predict exactly where they will hit, if they will hit. But Funny you uh, mentioned that, Sharon. Just another tweet through. A mini tornado has just swept through a housing estate uh, at Malulaba, so uh, as we as we know, they're uh, they're very spontaneous. But uh, so that one just came through on Twitter as well. And also, just an update, Sharon, from the Lockyer Valley Regional Council. They've tweeted that we mentioned earlier there was a rescue from a roof uh, top in the Helladon region, and they've confirmed that the rescue was carried out and everybody is okay. Oh, so that is good news. Hear. But yeah. yes, there's a lot happening out there. Inundation, roads closed. So be careful if you do have to venture out. But if you don't, as we've said throughout the morning. Don't go anywhere near it. Stay inside and out of harm's way. Right now, uh, we're going to go to Rockhampton, where Seven News reporter Sally Prosser joins us live from the newsroom. And Sally, uh, there's been a dramatic rescue to the west in Biloela. 
Yeah, it was a frightening scenario. Two women and a 14-month-old child became stranded in the tray of a ute near the Dawson Highway. They were surrounded by 400 metres of water. The Capricorn Rescue helicopter battled bad weather to get to the scene. They then hoisted a crewman down to begin winching, but discovered they didn't have a sling small enough for the child. On board, they did have a dive bag, so they tested it to make sure it could hold the weight. They then lowered that down, zipped the little one in and winched him up. Understandably, the women and the little one were extremely distressed. They hugged and kissed their rescuers, very grateful to be back on dry land. Rockhampton. Now we have in the studio one of Queensland's most experienced severe weather experts, Jeff Callaghan, who worked for the Bureau for many, many years. Uh, Jeff, good to have you here with us this morning. Uh, firstly, overview question. How, how significant is this system? Yeah, these uh, systems that come down overland from the Gulf have a history of uh, being incredibly severe and uh, destructive systems. The, uh, I guess to make it down here, overland, they've got to be very intense, uh, the circulation and it's got to extend right up through the atmosphere. So if this was over the ocean, it'd be, it'd be a really severe cyclone. So it's done up without even any energy from the ocean. So why is it so bad then? Two systems converging? What happened? No, it's just that it's, it was a potentially a very severe cyclone, but it never well, made it over the land. Afternoon. Stay on 7, we'll continue live coverage when we return in just a moment. Queensland's most experienced weather presenter, John Schluter, returns tonight, joining Sharon Gadella and Bill McDonald on 7 News, Queensland's number one news. Welcome back to our rolling coverage of this extreme weather event hitting the southeast. To get an update now on all the weather conditions, we're going to go to John Schluter for the very latest. Thank you, Bill. Good evening or good afternoon, rather, again. Now, we'll take a look at uh, what these winds are doing. This is what's concerning us at the moment. Now, firstly, they're expected to increase as the day goes on. There's the possibility of gusts up to 120 k's. Uh, so far, that's only happened at Double Island Point. They recorded uh, 122 k's at about uh, quarter to 11 this morning. So far, the rest of the southeast has been below that, but they certainly are increasing. Now, on the Sunshine Coast, winds are increasing to over 80 k's, and that's likely to increase further today. Maruchador's peaked at about 83 k's, and the city of the Gusts are certainly picking up as well. Uh, so far at Kangaroo Point, that's the main uh, city weather station, we get our information from. The winds there, 55 k's. Uh, but uh, further inland, they're increasing as well, particularly up in the Darling Downs. Toowoomba is already up around 90 k's. And then south uh, to the Gold Coast, the peak there up around 70. But as we stress, these will increase as we go on. Uh, for the uh, what's going on as far as the chart is concerned, what we're looking at here is the rainfall that's uh, been happening for the last uh, four or five days from right to south. And let's check on the latest in Gladstone, where record flooding has cut off two coastal communities. Anita Theodoro is there and joins us on the phone. And Anita, bring us up to date. What's the situation in Gladstone this morning? Well, Gladstone Regional Mayor Gail Sullivan says we we're in a place we've never been before. The flood level at Awonga Dam is believed to have peaked at 48.23 metres earlier this morning. That's about eight and a half metres above the spillway. It's dropped a couple of centimetres already and all that's starting to help ease the pressure. There are rumours suggesting the dam wall is no longer stable. Structurally, the main wall and overflow are fine. A saddle dam is holding well at the moment that has overtopped cutting off the long it's dam amazing road. amazing footage collected around the region so far this morning. Right now we're going to bring you some more remarkable pictures of one of the twisters actually hitting Bagara. So they were sent in by a viewer and show the size and the power of the wind as it just moved in off the water. Now the water spout, you'll see it hits the land and as we've already seen, it caused so much damage around that area yesterday. And the threat of more twisters, of course, is moving south. We're talking about uh, six tornadoes at this stage have been uh, accounted for to hit along the Queensland's coast around the Bundaberg region. Let's have a look at that. We, uh, Jeff is still here with us and we talked about the characteristics these things take on. We've all seen the big twisters and spouts uh, over in America and Kansas. Uh, can they take on different forms, Jeff? Yeah, these uh, ones that come off the ocean uh, manifest uh, as a uh, water spout, whereas the usual severe thunderstorm uh, tornado comes from over land. So you, you see that uh, characteristic signature of the, uh, you know, the water being funneled up into it. And what sort of wind gusts come out of these tornadoes? Oh, yeah, the, the strongest winds on the planet, well over 300 k's per hour, but n not these, you know, the uh, severe thunderstorm supercell tornadoes over 300 k's per hour. But uh, I guess these uh, uh, would have uh, winds uh, well over 150 k's per hour, probably up, up towards 200 k's per hour. Extremely destructive. Yeah, yeah, they can do a lot of damage, as we've witnessed uh, 
And uh, as we were saying, a break before... uh, of our rolling coverage of this extreme weather event in the southeast of the state. Stay with us. We're going to have the latest warnings coming up after the break. We'll try and recap the situation and to let you know exactly what is likely to happen this afternoon as that system moves uh, slowly down towards Brisbane, down to the Gold Coast, and further into northern New South Wales. We'll be back soon. Welcome back to Seven's rolling coverage of this extreme weather event in the southeast Queensland. And here's the radar looking back over the last 12 hours just of the amount of rain that has been falling right across the region. We know today we're expecting between 200 and 300 millimetres as this uh, ex-tropical cyclone Oswald moves down the coast and heading down towards New South Wales. It'll go through the Sunshine Coast, of course, Brisbane, and we're expecting heavy rain as it moves its way down to the Gold Coast and then into New South Wales. So uh, lots of roads have been cut off and uh, we're trying to bring you up to date on all of those uh, situations as they unfold. Uh, a lot of evacuation centres are open as well. We'll try and give you some information there. I know on the Sunshine Coast uh, at the Nambour Civic Centre and also the J up in Noosa Junction and the Caloundra Indoor Stadium and at Bribey, Bribey Island Rugby League Club, uh, the Caboolture Memorial uh, which is in King Street at Caboolture and also Watson Park Convention Centre. If you need to make your way to any of those centres, they are open and uh, we'll happily look after you there. And of course, Bill, we're also hoping to speak to the Premier soon as well. Now, he has been to Bagara this morning, which was hit by that tornado yesterday. Uh, he's coming down to Brisbane, hoping to be at Emergency Management Queensland headquarters soon. Now, I understand... Welcome back live. Pictures, a very soggy looking wheel down at uh, South Bank as this wet weather continues to close in right around the region. Welcome to our live coverage. Continuing coverage as communities right along the coast come under threat from floods, uh, heavy rain, tornadoes, all sorts of stuff's being thrown at us at the moment. So we're just trying to keep you updated as best we can right across the day. Uh, we'll be crossing in a bit later to Emergency Management Queensland to get the latest from them. There's briefings coming up very soon. Uh, also the Bureau of Meteorology for the latest on what this uh, ex-tropical cyclone Oswald is doing and track that system. We'll also check in with John Sluter who's going to keep us up to date as well with the weather. And uh, reporters based right around the region. They're doing a wonderful job. They're out there in uh, terrible conditions today, but they're trying to keep us up to date, and we'll do that as best we can. We are, how do have some reports in now that residents of North Bundaberg are being ordered to leave their homes immediately. Now, the suburb is expected to experience widespread flooding from Sunday afternoon, and the residents have been told that they just have limited time to get out. So they're being told to leave their homes. Uh, some in South and East Bundaberg are also being told to, uh, to leave. It's expected they think about 300 homes in North Bundaberg will go under uh, and those that don't are going to be isolated. So uh, certainly an emerging situation there. We'll keep across that one as the afternoon progresses. Of course, as I mentioned before, the Premier has indicated that the Army will be called in if needed as this uh, situation unfolds. And of course, he's also spoken to Julia Gillard, the Prime Minister, regarding the situation and uh, she has offered her support. So uh, troubling times ahead for people in the southeast of the state. Yeah. Now, one area where water is rising very very rapidly at the moment is Kedron Brook in the north of Brisbane. Our reporter Kim Skubris is there and Kim bring us up to date what's happening there at the moment. Well Sharon only an hour ago I was standing just downstream here near Gympie Road you can see the light post there over less than an hour this area has risen more than half a metre. Locals who've been through the 2011 January floods have been down here they can't believe how quickly it's rising. You can see behind me down over the walkway here all the debris that's been washed down. We've certainly seen a lot of broken tree branches. As you can see, the wind gusts are getting incredibly strong. Those up to 125 well, down, kilometres downstream at the moment, that's where there was actually a walkway less than an hour ago. You can't see anything now. It's just water as far as you can see. That was a concrete pathway where people were walking their dogs less than an hour ago. Now the water level is rising up the grass embankment and obviously towards those homes. But people here are confident the water won't actually encroach on their backyards but they obviously aren't taking any chances and are sandbagging just in case. Well that's good to hear. Kim we're just going to interrupt you there. We have live pictures now on air of the Premier. He has toured the Bagara area which of course was hit by a tornado yesterday. Now the Premier has indicated that uh, he's prepared to call the army in if resources are needed. The problem for the disaster people is that there are so many areas that have been hit. The damage is widespread and the concern is where do they send the resources first. So there's a big coordination process going under
underway at Emergency Management Queensland. The Premier is due to come back to Emergency Management Queensland sometime this afternoon and we're hoping to hear from him then. But obviously you can see, Bill, uh, residents devastated. Restricted. There. It's like the ballet dancer, you know, the smaller you make yourself, the, the quicker you spin. So the wind speeds within the uh, tornadoes are much stronger than, the, uh, than in the larger scale system. Well, this happened earlier this morning, the pictures we're seeing here now with the... Uh, we're only just getting the pictures in now. You can imagine it's uh, not easier to get things out of the region. But, uh, to try the, and deal the with the, the damage that's been caused in such a huge area of the state. Some live coverage here from Kedron Brook. Now, I, I hear people all the time say, oh, it sounds like a broken record, but that's why the messages keep being reiterated. Now, they, they're just completely defying all the warnings about getting into the swift water rescue. Um, and getting out there and riding, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know what people think when they hear all the warnings, they see all the pictures of rescues on the news, yet they still want to go out and uh, think they're having a bit of fun like this. And um, one of those people out there happened to get into trouble, they're going to put rescue crews at risk to try and save them. So uh, is that a ball in the water there? I think it's uh, it a is, boy, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, boy. A, a boy, so. Um, it's so deceptive, the water, isn't it? Like you look at it and you can't really tell it it's as swift as it is or that it's sometimes as deep as it is. And that's what people forget. They think it looks quite harmless. But the minute, I mean, you can see how fast they're travelling in that water there. And that area is notorious for flooding, isn't it? And they, yeah. they've had problems there in the past. I mean, look at this guy here. He's almost toppling out of the canoe or maybe he's trying to do that. But, um, but you know, this is what Emergency Management Queensland has you know, stipulated so many times, just don't put the, the lives of rescuers yeah. at risk. Yeah, they're obviously uh, experienced at what they do, but uh, they're well decked out. They're just having a bit of a game out on the water, but as we say, we encourage everyone not to go anywhere near it. Well, and, it doesn't uh, take much for an accident to happen and uh, for them to get into some sort of trouble. So um, please, if you're at home, please stay at home if you can. That is the one big message that Emergency Management Queensland is trying to get out today. Please stay at home if you don't have to be on the roads or out in the creeks. All right, we're going to go back and hear a bit more from the Premier Campbell Newman in Bagara. Well, we're here in Bagara outside Andrew and Michelle's house um, and seeing scenes of incredible devastation. Uh, roofs peeled off. Uh, windows smashed, uh, large items of, uh, of timber thrust through walls uh, and of course power lines down and trees shredded. Um, it's, uh, it's hard to really describe though this is the impact when you see uh, how bad it is down here. Uh, I'm pleased to be joined though with uh, uh, Ministers uh, Christopher Foley and Dempsey, uh, local member Stephen Bennett, uh, Mayor Mal Foreman and also the federal member for Hinklo, Paul Neville. Um, the immediate uh, job now is to uh, try and stabilise the situation and start the process of restoring, restoring the essential services like the power. But clearly there's going to be some big issues for Ergon in doing that. Um, the Mayor is talking about uh, other big problems that he has. Uh, we're now sadly expecting a very significant flood for Bundaberg on the Burnett River. Uh, that will be bigger than last time it's believed. Uh, and so there is going to be a significant resourcing issue for the local council. Uh, that is the information that I'll be communicating back to the State Disaster Management Group immediately on our way back into town. Um, I'll be asking them to consider what resources uh, we can deploy to assist the Bundaberg Regional Council. Um, and I'll particularly uh, be stressing that there is going to be a lot to be done. Uh, that is well beyond their capacity. And I can see that straight away, particularly considering the flood impacts we'll see on the city of Bundaberg. I'm very mindful, though, that there is going to be uh, a lot more work, places like Maryborough and uh, Gympie as well, and we still don't know how it's going to develop in south-east Queensland. So this is going to be the big challenge about making sure we uh, have enough resources and we put them into the right locations at the right time. Uh, I have been talking to the Mayor uh, about uh, his planning to date. Uh, he tells me that he'll now be looking at uh, uh, trying to rally the community uh, as a mud army and I'd certainly uh, suggest that people should be helping friends, relatives, one another, uh, taking people in who've been displaced from homes uh, and, uh, uh, and of course trying to lend a hand wherever we can. But uh, uh, this event is developing, this is only the start of it for Bundaberg uh, and sadly for places further south. Has it surprised you, the extent of the damage? Uh, look, uh, I'm having a sense of deja vu. I'm afraid uh, in my uh, role in uh, public life I've been to a few disaster zones and it's very reminiscent of the Gap Storm in, in late 2008. 
Uh, what uh, I think is sort of uh, quite shocking for everyone concerned is just how quickly this came in. Just came out of nowhere, bam. And uh, I'm, I'm just so relieved that so far we've had no reports of, a, of loss of life down here. But clearly uh, we've had some serious injuries, particularly with the, the two people who were uh, crushed in their car. And with the ongoing rain and the high tides, uh, the Bundy region, it's, it's not out of the woods yet, is it? Oh, Bundaberg is in for a big flood. Uh, it is in for a flood uh, at this stage. It looks to be bigger than 2010-2011, uh, a greater flood height. Uh, and upstream, places like uh, uh, Gainder and Mundabra uh, clearly are in the path of flood water right around now. the Gippie region as well, which I think you may have alluded to earlier. So we're going to try and get some, some more information as soon as we can after a break uh, around the Gympie region as well, Sharon. All right, we'll cross, uh, cross to a break now and we'll be back soon with the latest on this situation. Stay with us.